What's up guys, welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at glass, but specifically iridescence. Ooh, this is pretty stuff. Believe me, stick around. You want to watch and see what we can do with this. We explore all the different settings and whatnot. We'll get there. Don't worry. But if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, please them all that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Okay, getting into it now. So as of Twin Motion 2023.1, we received brand new glass materials. They came with all kinds of different features and one of them is iridescence. So if you're not familiar what iridescence is, I'll explain it to you as we go along, but it is adding a spectrum of color or let's call it a gradient of color to glass. And this is not naturally done in life or in the world. It is usually something that requires uh, some sort of a uh, substrate for the light to pass through that's not just the glass in this case it's something else um, so where can we find this uh, I'll continue explaining some of the basic sciences of it as we go along but here's clear glass I'm just gonna apply this to this whole material so we can really see this working and so where can we find this first of all well we can find this in the tent more and then there's iridescence and we can just simply click this on and you can see yeah there's a nice little gradient of color and it's really nice to see. It's cool. And there's all kinds of settings here. And believe me, we will get here. Uh, but to <laughs> to make this look a little bit better and not only look better, but also to help you understand what the settings we're doing, what, how they affect the color itself, how they affect the material itself based on everything iridescence, we're going to change this from a standard type of glass to a colored type of glass and immediately you could see this is gorgeous so at this point i will stop and say some of the real basic things that i know about what iridescence is so a lot of times it if you see iridescent glass for example it there is some sort of uh, property typically kind of minuscule minuscule tiny tiny like salt particles or things like that uh, to where the light passes through it and basically if you get a white light you know you're familiar with the spectrum and the rainbow that passes through all these different angles of salt and as that hits the salt it disperses into different colors and there's different wavelengths so basically every wavelength between red and violet we can see that's visible light but they all have different wavelengths which means that as those different colors come in whether it's white light or different colors hitting these let's say salt crystals for example on this just basic sheet of glass is now going to start bouncing and reflecting them. So you could kind of think of iridescence as interference. And the result that we see is just, of course, pretty colors, but it's not even so much of that is the interference of all these light waves hitting these salt particles or these different materials in a certain way to where they bounce and they hit our eye at different, uh, basically different angles. And that is all because of whatever substrate is there beyond just the glass in this case, for example. Now, obviously, there's no extra mineral or materials on this glass. It just is a part of the glass. It's something that you can apply as a film to glass and things like that. So these are not so much things to worry about, but just I wanted to give you a basic understanding of the science and that this is not just some cool thing that you can do within Twin Motion. This really exists, um, and it's it's quite fascinating if you look at it. There, there's really a lot that can go go into it. Okay, so the main thing that I want to point out to you is that with this glass, just based on what I was explaining about uh, the light reflecting off of other particles, the idea is that as you move or if the material moves, basically your viewing angle of the material or the glass in this case, if you were to move, then the material itself will look different. The colors will change, the gradient will change, things like that. So that's the kind of expectations that we have for something that truly has iridescence and that is iridescent. And so if I were to pan around and then move around in the scene, we should see a shift in this material and, and the colors actually. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna pan around and look and uh, I kind of see it like barely I can't say that it is uh, definitely happening, so I'm going to say it probably isn't, but whenever I move, we can start to see that, hey, look at this. It is starting to respond to me physically moving, which that is so cool. Like that is, that is really the appeal of this type of material because this is actually real. This type of you know, thing, this type of reaction is just all based on where we are, where the light's coming in, what's happening. Uh, 
all that interference and how it hits our eye. So that's fantastic to see that that does work. Now, I, we'll see if actually moving around and just panning around one day does work, but I can I can see why it doesn't. It's just it it's a lot easier to just do it if you're moving around because that's definitely more real. Okay, so with all that said, let's take a look at you know some of the settings here because yeah, we we looked at the kind of real world example of you know basically how it works, but how does it work in twin motion? Well. Let's come in here to, again, tint. And then we can see, yeah, we've got the base color, we've got the tint color mask. We don't care about those, we have iridescence. And we can always turn this on or off. Turning this off gives us our basic material that we had before. Uh, just know that this is all on top of the other material. So if we're in the clear glass and we affect any other color here, any other uh, material property, it's going to affect the, mat the material, the rest of the material. And by product, it's going to impact the iridescence. So that's just really something to be aware of. This is just happening alongside the material. It's not replacing the material in and of itself. Okay, more, and then when it, we have tons of different settings here. So we'll go, we'll go left and right, and it is, it's gonna get a little more complicated as we go along, but let's see here. The intensity, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of guess what it does. So we can see, well, do we want this more intense or not? So as we obviously go from zero to 100, it becomes more intense, uh, but at zero, it is as if the iridescence were off. So let's go back to tint. I will turn it off and then nothing happens. And so why is that again? Because the intensity is zero. And so I wouldn't encourage you to put it at zero because it will confuse you or others. And you probably want iridescence if you have iridescence on. Okay, very simple. And for the rest of this tutorial, I probably want to keep this at 100% or close to it so we can really see what is happening because there, there's a lot happening here, as you can see. Okay, and then here, the different types. Th these are these are just predefined gradient maps that Twinmotion has preloaded for us here. And so we can cycle through these and you can see, you know, again, these are things that exist or could exist in the real world in some way, um, but these are just different gradients. So for the sake of this, we'll go back to type one. We can come in here to more, and this is where if you wanted to add your own gradient map, you would put it right here. Um, I will leave a link in the description to an example just so you can get an idea of like the size and the look because uh, you're kind of looking for a full range of a gradient but something that uh, goes from one color and back to that color on one gradient okay and then stretch so if you keep in mind that we're working with a gradient a gradient that goes from one color let's say if we're using three colors is kind of three colors we have one color here uh, two, three colors, and then it pans back to color two and then color one. So you have this kind of full cycle. And so the idea is if we stretch, we are going to see portions of that gradient as opposed to the entire gradient. So let, let, let's see, let's take this up to 50 and see what happens. Just putting this at 50. Well, this is what I said. So if we put this at 50, imagine you're looking at a gradient, like I said, color one, two, three, and then two, one. So you're kind of circling around. In the center, you have just 50%. And so if we stretch it out to the point where we're only looking at 50%, we're looking at that one color in the middle. And that's that example. So if we stretch this back, we could see, hey, we, we're starting to see at a quarter, we're seeing essentially two colors. And then at 75%, we're seeing basically the same two colors. And then at 100%, we're seeing basically what we saw at zero. It's the exact same. So just that is a real brief description of the stretching. It's just taking that gradient and focusing on little portions of it based on the percentage. So interesting. And then phase. Phase is basically offsetting this. It's, it's shifting the whole thing. And so before we go to phase, actually, I want you to watch the, the preview here as I stretch this. And we can see we can, we're literally losing colors. And then we lose the second color. We get that color back. And then we finally get the third. Okay. Now phase, you'll see that this, it will change, of course, but it's just where the colors appear in, in the gradient. So it's basically just rotating, rotating this gradient around itself. And so if we put this phase at 0.5, we can see that we have basically completely inverted. And if we go back to one, we're basically where we were. So zero and one are the exact same. You can see zero, one, zero, one, and then we can just cycle through. And so it's, you can see just folding in on itself like that, which is, it's just shifting. It's like basically where is zero? Where's the start point? And so it's not so much that there are three colors and two of the colors appear twice. It's 
that as you phase this around or offset this around, those colors are going to shift. So the second, the third color that shows up in the middle then becomes a second and so on, that type of thing. And then fall off is literally how many colors you see essentially. So it has a range from zero to two, one being halfway. There's probably some more logic to this that I don't understand, but uh, we, as we bring the fallout down, you can see we're, we basically lose all the colors. We're, we're basically determining, Hey, I only want to see one color. So if we start at zero, we have one color and that is just literally on one end of the spectrum. And then we go up to two and we see, we basically kind of doubled everything. We have essentially doubled the gradient of itself. So we, we, that whole cycle I talked about is now done twice. So really interesting stuff. And so if I put this at one, we're back to our original. If I look at it at two, we basically have two versions of that there. So I, the most interesting part is if I put this at a fallout of zero, which means I'm just seeing that first color, no matter what. And then I end up stretching this. I'm only seeing one color uh, across the whole gradient the whole time. So I don't know why you'd want to do this because you could achieve this through just the tint of the colored glass. That's fine. Um, same with phase. We can just shift this between colors. So <laughs> having a fall off of zero doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. It just shows you that single color, but it's, it's just so interesting the number of things that we can do here. And I really like it just because it's, it's here and it's so easy to flip between and some, get some really cool looks in really essentially no time. And so I want to keep this type one here and maybe let's go ahead and duplicate this material. And I want to put this one on this little whiskey glass I have here. And yeah, like, obviously this looks absurd, but if we're looking at this type of a, a basically a small scale versus this giant scale, um, I might want to make this look a bit different, you know, make this look a little more natural. So what's a little more uh, natural of a color here? I don't know it, really any of these will work. Some of them are probably a bit more ridiculous than some of the others. You know, can you angle this? Can you change the look? Not so much. Um, I would have to experiment with making our own custom gradient to get an idea if that's something that we could do or that we want to do. Uh, let's say we want to go with this. Well, you know, I can make it look a little more <laughs> real if I adjust this quite a bit, you know, that's totally fine like that. But maybe I come in here and maybe instead of colored, I just have it be standard. And obviously it does look quite different. And maybe I want this to be a bit more opaque because I want that to stand out a bit more. Maybe I can see, I can change the tint. This is going to drastically impact some things in some cases, but notice that if you have a tint, it really doesn't impact the iridescence because the iridescence is taking over that tint. So I can come back in here and I can make it more or less intense. Maybe what, maybe what I want to do instead of make it a standard is make it a color and then just reduce the intensity. So bringing it down a bit just to make it seem a little more <laughs> normal, something that you would see in life. And so, yeah, that's so interesting. Something else we can do here, of course, is a pat make change the opacity. Like I said before, the opacity of the material is, has nothing to do with the iridescence. It's totally just, this is on top of everything else. So I might want to see a fully opaque material uh, versus not that type of thing. If I want to see through it all or not. So this is so interesting. Uh, obviously you can do this with any glass, which is so cool. Um, some of these really weird pattern glasses here like this um, probably want to change the scale here so we can see this a bit better. Obviously this is not real at all or real looking, um, but it is nonetheless fun to work with. We come in here to iridescence now go to tint iridescence on and it works all the same. It, it's so cool. So interesting. And like I said, maybe this ends up being a colored so we can really see how crazy this is, you know, quite fun, quite fun. There's a lot here that we can do. Um, <laughs> whether you want to do this or not, or not is totally up to you. This type of thing is awesome. So play with the iridescence. Uh, we looked at all the different settings. There's quite a lot, but in the end, it's fairly simple and just know that this does exist in real life. So I would encourage you to look this up because it's pretty cool stuff. And there's a lot that you can do because again, it's really interesting. You get some nice looks. And so I hope you, I really hope you learned something because uh, really interesting stuff It's definitely not something I knew just off the bat, but uh, hopefully I helped you out. And if you did happen to learn something, please demolish that like button really helps me out quite a lot. Yep, and that will do this video. Also consider subscribing. That really does help too. I will see you in the next one. 
Have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for watching.